So a big part of this journey is for me to take a look at my personal genealogical makeup. At an in-depth level, that's going to allow me the capacity to decide and decipher through what serves me and what doesn't serve me in my essence, in my truth, in my sense of spirit, in my nature. Because often the internal conflict from my observation is coming from the incongruency of internal values, I guess you could say, from how and why you want to live a particular way with a certain expression in a that a way that manifests in your world in a particular way. And that's not like the fantasy idealism. It's more so, regardless of what it looks like on the outside, it's the, the realness that the connection that I have with my reality not what it looks like. I've got myself into countless environments that are incredible to witness, to see, to experience. But that's just the manifest in the outside world. It's what's my relationship with the connection of that. And you will notice that a lot of my recordings are out in nature because it's one of my highest values. It's what feels right for me. It's where I feel home. Well enough, in a forest. Cities tend to congest me, overwhelm me. I have an appreciation for them and I enjoy the buzz of them when I go to visit them. But fundamentally, to reside constantly in one is overwhelming for me. And that's my truth. And that's okay. But coming back to making conscious decisions by not being afraid to immerse yourself and look into the depth of yourself oneself, the genealogy, your biological makeup, what you've inherited, because a lot of complications within self cannot, can be not really your own, if that makes sense. They can be inherent through your genealogy it's if you, i guess if to to make it look at it another way if you would look at a a breed of canine the dog for instance and each breed of dog each has its genealogical genealogical makeup which has its natures and temperaments and so forth which then represent in its expression of the type of dog that it is. Some may be more robust, some may be cute, some may be a little bit more aggressive, some may be more placid and peaceful. Doesn't matter, but it's what I'm getting at is just looking at, okay, so this is something that I have been made up of and it's, and if you're noticing elements of yourself that aren't true to you, deciding, 
making a conscious decision to not reject it, to embrace the elements that are not serving you in order to dilute or dispel or discharge how they're not serving you. So it's not not owning who or what you're made up of, it's merely shifting the charge or the energetics or your relationship with those elements that you're becoming aware of. And it's not something to use as an excuse because this is, that's not taking responsibility. And all responsibility is, are you response able? Are you able to respond, not react, not disconnect, not faint away from? So the responsibility part is one thing that I encourage whilst reflecting at your genealogy, your culture, your nature, your makeup, your history. The history is the past. The past is the past and will never be again unless you continue to recreate that. And the future is a mystery. So many of us will often live a life and I can appreciate this because it's something that I'm constantly bringing myself to awareness of as well is that you can either live in the past and govern and sub be subordinated by the past which is what I'm looking at with my genealogy here of the suppression and complications and turmoils that a lot of the Polish culture have had influence upon them through the wars through the invasions and a lot of depression and there's a lot of heavy energy and for me in my spirit even though I'm of that and it is a biological makeup within me it's something I'm choosing to look at see it's part of my biological makeup but making choices to move beyond where I felt trapped or limited by that very nature within my genealogy. Geneal genealogy. So I invite you to sit with yourself, get yourself out of your familiar environment and I say that because there's a lot of comfort in familiarity and even if the familiar, fam familiarity is not serving you and it's um, not in harmony with your spirit, your sense of self, your truth, it's important there is comfort because it's familiarity and there's a repetitious cycle continuing to happen. So it's a matter of capturing whether you can decide and choose in the moment. It's like, whoa, in a moment of perhaps reactivity or a time of emotional charge or a time of conflict, personal conflict or even a conflict in others, with others. Because a conflict with another is also really a conflict within yourself of some part of yourself that you are unable to align and live congruently and in harmony with in the truth of that nature within yourself because of elements that I'm discussing here right now. So reflect upon it. Get out of your comfort zone. Get to somewhere unfamiliar and learn to be in an unfamiliar place and look at establishing growth and even levels of comfort of visiting places of discomfort some of you think why would you do that well for me being there 
Because often it's like, oh, being there, is that like, oh, you make it to a destination and that's it, that's life, you don't have to do anything ever again. Oh, by the way. Um, or is it the journey of getting there? But my question is, what's the there? Where's there? 